and if it's a semi-hard case, you know, we we use a we use a fiberboard, um, you know, the same thing that goes into like tennis shoes and stuff like that. So sure, it's, sure. It's, it's stiff, but not too stiff. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're trying to protect the cue from as much as possible while it's in the case, you know. So while it's not in your hands, we're trying to protect it from everything else. Yeah. And then we just, you know, we'll build, we build as much decoration around that as you want to pay for. Okay. And that's why we have a really wide range of of custom products that we do. You know, I mean, um, products, cases. Okay. Yes. The, this rugged line here, the red and black that's, that's on screen now, or mm -hmm. uh, it might not be on the on the live stream yet, but um, but this case, No, what you're seeing here is what they're seeing okay, now. Okay, great. Well, that case, for example, we started that about five or six years ago, mm -hmm. and um, it was originally intended to be a mass production item for a another company. For another company, mm -hmm. we just prototyped it basically mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they elected not to go with them. Um, I don't think they liked the pricing, you know, the, where it ended up because of the, the, the amount of quality that went into it. Yeah. And um, well, I had hired people to uh, to make these prototypes, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, I, I thought that they were going to go ahead with the production on them and employ those people. And they didn't, so I said, "Well, you know, let's just do it and see how it goes." And uh, it's taken off because it's a it's a great case at a great price point. So you you were able to to uh, obtain or retain all licensing for this design. Well, yeah, it was, there wasn't any licensing okay. to it. It was it was basically we were just uh, we were just asked to come up with some cases, and um, we had made about 18 or 20 different models mm -hmm. um, for them to look at and choose from. And um, this was one of the models that they didn't go with. I think they, at that time, they thought it was maybe too plain. Or now, the guts of your cases, uh, th th this is what I'm, you know, th this is kind of like what people try to imitate now because oh, yeah. you are providing ultimate protection. Well, you can see the padding right there. I mean, you can see the amount of cushiness in there. Yeah. And that doesn't extend all the way down. Yeah. Um, that just That's just like about five or six inches. But the, the rest of the case has a basically a single layer padding. Mm -hmm. So that the cue parts can't touch each other, they, you know, you can drop it to the floor, they don't move, and that that's kind of what's important to me because the way I got into this was my cues fell out of a five hundred dollar case. Yes. And that's when I started Instroke back in nineteen ninety one, because I said I don't want this to happen to me again. And when I started building cases for other people, obviously I didn't want it to happen to them. You know. California, right? So um, Joe Porper, you're well aware of him, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Oh yes. You know yes. his his case was actually one of the first really protective case that I had, and back then he used to make it with tapered slots. Okay. So the the cue only went in one way. Mm hmm And so I had that case, and w he actually had ads where he would turn the case over and and the cues wouldn't fall out. Then I switched to a nice leather case. And I put my cues in the same way, and I thought that it would be that way, but it wasn't. You know, it's was just I really see. naive back in you know when I was 21 years old. And um, so you mean you developed an interest for? By the way, for those just joining us, uh, and we've just started this match here with Warren Kiamko and Joe Gray. What a great! You're you're sitting in a good match oh, right now, race to match, nine. Yeah. Uh, and who I'm sitting with? I'm sitting with John Barton of JB Cases. We're talking about his cases right now, but. Um, uh, you know, that was my question to you is, uh, it, it, you know, being 21 years old, talking to Joe Porper, this indicates to me that you, you had an interest in this case building uh, stuff long time ago. Well, no, I, I have to correct you. I actually, I didn't talk to Joe. I just, you saw, his... I saw, you know, back then it was just magazines and the ads and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we really didn't talk, we didn't have opportunities much to talk to people unless we actually called. Yeah. Um, but the properties of that porper case mm -hmm. um, were what I then came to expect in every case. I see. Basically, I see. so that's okay. why I, that's why I went ahead and. and uh, so that served as almost the uh, template for you, not template, but well, the... yeah, it was the you know it was the, the the security aspect was what I wanted to make sure was in every case that I owned. Yeah. And at that time, I just rebuilt that leather case, mm -hmm. the interior. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, you know, this is not even really my style of case. I just bought it because it makes me look like a player, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember the port for cases. They're right, well, good that cases. Well, that port was nice, but that, that wasn't the one I was talking about. I bought the leather case, which was actually a J, uh, um, 
J E F or, or other people know them as J Flowers. Okay. I bought that case off my friend who had visited Florida, and um, yeah, I, I probably never would have got into case making if, if my cue hadn't accidentally uh, fallen out after getting after the case got knocked over, you know. Mm. And um, but yeah, that was basically the impetus, you know, for getting into it. And then I thought, well, I can just try to build the whole case, and so I did. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, this match here, though, get back to the match. This is, uh, well, well, you know, just just to give you a little. Oh, you were on the chat room last night, weren't you, John? Sure, yeah. So, so you're aware. You you know that Warren Kiamko is actually in the hot seat for the eight ball uh, portion of the Junior Norris. Oh yeah. Uh, he, he he took the hot seat match last night against Charlie Hill, Billy Bryant, and um, he uh, he actually sold for the highest in the Calcutta here. Sure in the nine it. ball portion for 800 that makes his uh, his uh, buyers feel better <laughs> yeah and actually his buyer is a friend of mine now new friend of mine joe joe uh uh busca from uh, uh joe's custom cues oh yeah you know joe yeah well, I've heard joe and del garrett is, uh, is, uh, some people say he makes the best jump cue you know uh yeah and um there's a couple people around that people say that about but uh, but the busca jump cue actually was uh a lot of people seem to like that a lot yeah, he's doing. I mean, Mike Massey's picking them, he picked them up, and he's dealing them now. So you can get one of those cues from Mike Massey. Uh, so you know, I gotta tell you, being here has just been a wonderful experience for me, making some new friends, and uh, you know. Yeah, you don't get out to Middle America very much, do you? I don't. I actually, I, I would, uh, you know, I invite the opportunity to do it more, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, we take a lot of gear with us on these events, so it's kind of expensive. <laughs> oh, Warren kind of got himself a little in trouble here. He's very straight on this ball. Let's I see mean, if we can, can. He can. He can drift up. It's okay, let's see if we can. Yeah. I don't know. Can he drift up? Oh yeah. Yeah. He can, he can just follow it up easily, but still, you don't want he's to got be enough, up. He's got enough to cheat the pocket. You think? Yeah, he's That's all right. right. This Warren. But you know, even even Warren makes mistakes. I, you know, you know the best of them miss. It's funny because the, the Filipinos really kind of stayed away from bar table events for a long time. And then the last, say, the last five years or so, they've really been coming over and started dominating them. Yeah, not, that's... not really dominating per se, but, but they finish high all the time, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, well, Warren won like the 2012 bar table championships, uh, nine ball, uh, a couple of the same events at the mm -hmm. same venue, if I'm not mistaken. Because they really don't have they they don't have bar tables in the Philippines. Um, it's pretty much all nine foots there. But you know these guys, their touch is so good and everything. They adapt pretty quickly. Actually, you're, that reminds me. Maybe maybe uh, when I get the chance, I'll talk to Warren. I'll ask him what was it about the bar tables that attracted him. You know. Easy money. 2007 <laughs> Bar Table Championships. He'll say it in he, that sing-song Filipino accent. Yeah. Easy money, Daniel. Easy money. Easy, it's easy money. <laughs> uh, he won He won the eight ball, the nine ball, and the bonus money event in 2007. That was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll tell you. And I think story. Jose Perica. Can, can they hear us? Yeah, they can hear you. Oh. <laughs> I can turn you down. Well, I was going to tell you a Warren story, but now he's the man. I don't want to talk about no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's a good story, though. Okay, so Joey made a... a let's just say a ball, uh, the six ball, it looks like he made on the break. He's a little hooked. Well, if you were sitting in my chair, you'd say he's a lot hooked. <laughs> 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 this is one of the trickiest shots right here because in he's in a really bad position because the one is, is in a spot where when he hits it, it's just going to, it's pretty much staying in the open. Um, like, this is a hard shot to figure to, to get saved. One thing. Yeah, there's not a lot of, uh, like, uh, most of the balls are on the rail, so there's not a lot of area for him to find cover. That, that's that's the thing. The only thing I can see is like go to rails, try to come in deep behind it, and then and then if he catches a lot of the one ball right there, then the one ball could, could pretty much drift down towards the two. Another thing he could do is just play this real slow and just bring it oh, close to pushing. his. Oh, he's pushing. He's pushing okay. But isn't he pushing to a bank? Well, Warren will take the option here. 
Joey Gray is a one pocket player. I don't think he's going to give this back to him. And Joey obviously played it to a spot that he knows is probably the toughest spot that, that he could think of, you know, where he wouldn't want to be. Um, this one is a little, I think this one was a little bit tougher to get safe on because of where the two is. You can't really bank it under the four right there from where it's it, what it looks like. It's hard to tell from here, but it's true. Anyway, let's see what he does with it. This is a learning opportunity right here. Sure is. Yeah, I thought I, I, I figured he would bank it, but now he's. Uh, yeah, that was he's, a good. That was a good shot too. I mean, you know, that was probably the best shot to go with because. Uh, he's able to cut this too, I think. Too. Oh yeah, I think he's good right here. You just got to swing it back, swing it around behind the or between the four eight. Look at this. It's like a. It's like a mo motorcycle in rush hour traffic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. I'm from Los Angeles. I see that all, all the time. I don't know about, uh, you know, the traffic in... Are you in Tulsa? I'm in Oklahoma City. Uh, oh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma Tulsa City. is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it gets, it gets bad like two times a day, and, and mm -hmm. uh, that's it. And, and, and when I say bad, it means you're, you're delayed like an extra five minutes. I see, I see. I was in Oklahoma actually a couple years ago for a WPBA event. Maybe three years ago. It was my first time. No, oh, my second time there. Look at this. Oh, and he got there. Yeah. It's a little bit funny though. Now he's going to have to move the cue ball a little bit more than he wants, I think. Well, I think he can just leave it there. You know? He's fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll probably just kind of do a stop shot right there but maybe a little bit more angle than he wanted. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, you know, he kind of had to punch it a little bit to get back over. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I sure would like to have the digital circle that they have in snooker. You ever see that where they... Oh, man. This, this is where he wants the cue ball, John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they used to have a guy, I think his name was Sid Waddell, I believe. Um, Sid Waddell? Waddell or something like that. I don't know. It's, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what his name was, but okay. he had he had such a great line one time, and, and you can probably find it on YouTube, but it was like, a, he cut that ball thinner than a butterfly's eyelash. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And he had kind of a heavy accent, too. I don't know where he was from, which, which part of England he was from, but it was, uh, it was pretty good. My I think friend. it might have been a Moscone Cup. Like he was working with like like Jerry uh, from from AZ Billiards, and and uh, <laughs> it might have been one of those commentaries where they did together. That right, it, it was it was right. hilarious. Right. I love the color commentary. There's so many of uh, so many of those good commentators. Uh, you know, my first real exposure to pool commentary was. Uh, Danny Diliberto and Billy and Cardona. Yeah. Well, no, actually, <clears throat> snooker commentary when I was in my teens. But when I moved to the States, American Pool, it was Danny and Billy. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check the scoreboard here. Uh, is it two to one, Kiyomko? Yep. It is two to one. <clears throat> oh, I see. I see how they're doing it. Okay. You know, that's the other thing people don't realize. So somebody has to sit here and keep up with the score. It's not like you can just let the camera go. Um, I was thinking about this the other night, you know, how, how you guys, you're here before before the tournament starts, you know, pretty much. Uh, you're here after the tournament ends. Mm-hmm. And you're here for every single round. You know, in poker, they say you've got a leather ass. And uh, I think in pools, I think it's you guys that have leather asses. <laughs> oh, man, I hope that... Okay, good. I hope it doesn't end up being a, becoming a nickname. <laughs> no, that's my nickname, because whenever I play anybody, I'm, you're all, I'm you're the, in the one chair. in the chair. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I don't think there's a game... I mean, I, of course, I haven't, Ooh, I haven't played did you everything. See that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. He hit that way too thick. 
I'm I don't, sorry. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's a game or, or a sport um, that is more humbling than pool. You know? Well, golf for me was very humbling. I mean, I, I remember I went, I played golf. My third time playing golf, uh, I had a hole in one on the first hole. And I spent the rest of the day looking for my <laughs> balls, you know, and like, I think I went through like two dozen balls on the on the front nine. I can see that, yeah. Like like for <laughs> me, I I look at golf as hard. So like it's my second time playing golf, and I get a hole in one. I mean, this is back in my early twenties, you know. That'll hook you. That was humbling, <laughs> man. That was humbling because I'm like, well, where's my um, where's my next hole in one? <laughs> These guys have been working, you know, I got to hand it to both these players. They've been working so hard here. I mean, I've been watching these guys just go in match after match after match. Uh, and actually, we got good matches going on on all four of these tables right now. Oh, yeah. Mark Chernin's playing on table four against Chase Rudder. Charlie Bryant's playing uh, on table two. I got Alex Olinger on table three. And I don't know who those those two other opponents are. But if you check our CompuSport bracket, you can find them. I played Mark about two months ago. Churnin? Yeah, we played a couple sets, and um, we broke even. And uh, when it was done, I thought, um, Mark probably feels like he set the hook deep now. <laughs> well, do you want to know how much he went for in the Calcutta? Mark Churnin? I probably don't want to know. It was probably, it was probably, it was probably fairly cheap. 25 bucks. Oh, my God. You know who bought him? <laughs> Himself? Mark Chernin. <laughs> uh, I, was telling my, I was telling Joe Busca, he bought Kiamco. So I was like, dude, you have to bid $50 on Mark Chernin. He goes, no, you do it, Daniel. He goes, I'll, I'll, I'll lend you the money. I said, no, 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 I don't want to borrow the money. <laughs> he said, well, why don't you bid on him? I said, I'm broke right now. I can't, I can't bid. You yeah. bid. And, he, and he's like... Calcuttas, okay. Calcuttas are a thing, man, especially down here and down south and everything. Sure. And, um, and, um, but they, um, I was in a Calcutta, or I was in a tournament that had the most interesting Calcutta, and, and I've never seen one like it again, but I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And it was up north, I think it was in, it was in Fargo, North Dakota, or one of those, one of those Sioux Falls, maybe. And, um. What they did was they bundled the players together. So they had these bundles of six players. And okay. So they, were, they would be uh, A players, you know, A plus, B, C, and D players in, in the bundle. Mm -hmm. And then what they did is, is they had, they broke out the Calcutta into separate amounts for, for the highest finisher, the highest B player, highest C player, and so on. Um, so when you bought a bundle, you know, you got all these guys. Okay. So we bought, you know, we, we spent about twelve hundred in the Calcutta on a couple of different bundles, mm -hmm. and none of the none of the top players that we bought came in real high, but mm -hmm. surprisingly, some of the C and B players ended up, you know, finishing high in the tournament, and we ended up winning like twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars, you know, for our Calcutta money. That reminds me of a side bet that somebody made at Hard Times a few years ago for one of those hard, you remember the hard times 10 ball events we've done? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, at that particular event, we get sometimes over a dozen Filipino players. <laughs> and so I had a friend, uh, Hawaiian Jimmy, he made a side bet with somebody that the top four players would be all Filipinos <laughs> out of 10. That's a pretty good bet. And so, you know, it was like Alex Carlo Viado and I don't remember who else. <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, Did he win it? Oh, yeah, he won it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because that's how I found out about the bet, because after he won it, he was bragging about it, you know. Grady Matthews said something years ago um, that he thought would be good. He, he said that pool would be good, side betting on pool would be good if they would do it paramutual style. Um, yeah, I think, I believe in paramutual betting. I mean, bet Fred and stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they did that once in, in a tournament I was in. In um, the Ultimate Netherlands. Ultimate ten ball champion. Oh, okay. And um, it was actually really cool because the 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 amount of money that ended up getting paid out wasn't even known until all the bets were in. Yeah, I see. You know, and uh, and I brought a guy from from Germany with me who was a German eight ball champion, 
but he was relatively unknown in the Netherlands, and um, not a lot of people bet on him. So the payout, the payout for him if he won would have been great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was an all-around tournament. It was 14-1, eight ball, and nine ball. Meanwhile, look at this. Joey is uh, holding his own. He's oh, holding sure. court. You know, all these all these players that I, I've been telling you about, these guys are basically in stroke by now, you know. And when I mean in stroke, it's not that they don't play every day, you know, anyway, but they've been on these tables mm -hmm. enough time now to feel comfortable. They know what to expect. They know they're, how they're going to break. They know how they're, how they're going to roll. Uh, they they got a feel for what the real rails are going to do, the atmosphere in the room. I tell you what, I'll tell you one more thing. Um, I'll tell you one more thing is the uh, the uh, the the newer Valley tables. Yeah. Um, they actually play pretty good. Um, you know, they've they've made some improvements. I believe these are the newer ones too. I think they're a couple years old, or a year and a half, or something. No, you, you, if they're if they're level and, and everything's good and the cloth mm -hmm. is good, I mean, mm -hmm. they actually they, they play pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's another fact about the rails here that I need to find out about. They, I think they changed the rails here. They're different rails. Okay. So I don't know whether or not they're Artemis or what, but now that you've reminded me, I should go and ask Gary Benson. He's the uh, he, oh, these are Gary's tables? These are Gary Benson of High okay. Country Promotions. He's the one that put this all together, all the tables together. And uh, with him and his crew, John and Mike and, you know, uh, John, Lucky. And um, yeah, Gary's real good people. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, I'm having the best time with Gary Benson. <laughs> you will. I just think he is <laughs> such a nice man. Yeah, you, know? you will. Gary's... <laughs> Gary had a really nice restaurant out in Vegas uh, for, you know, he, he, he was doing real good out there and, uh, and supplying the tables. And um, I think he still does supply the tables for APA. And, you you um, might be right. Anyway, he, he bought into a, or bought a restaurant out there that was really nice, fine dining. And <laughs> Jameson New is going to come later. I think he told me he's on his way. Hey, you're kidding. Yeah, he's on his Jameson's way. coming? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait to see Jameson. Get, get ready. <laughs> I love him, man. And we he's had He's like my brother from another mother. <laughs> I like that guy. We had a misunderstanding when we went to Gary's place that that uh, that Jameson thought that Gary was comping everything. And so, <laughs> so the chef was coming out and and he was like offering like this dish, that dish, and then you want this wine or this drink or whatever. And, yeah. And James yeah. was just eating it all up. We ended up having like a <laughs> six or seven hundred dollar bill. Oh no. And uh, Gary was so so cool about it. He he like comped me half of it. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool because at the time I was working for Sterling Gaming, so I was just the guy doing the event out there, you know. And we had a you know. I didn't have authorization to have $700 dinners. Yes, right. Yeah, this was a comp on your uh, company time. Yeah. But it was a fantastic meal, I'll tell you that. <coughs> Light, once in a lifetime experience on that one. Warren, Warren is uh, holding court as well. So, uh, yeah, Christopher Cash in the chat room uh, says that, uh, you know, Getting dialed in on these tables is a huge factor, uh, and and I agree. You know, um, it's you, because they can be tricky. You know, it's like bar it's boxes like you, are little. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if your speed's not right there, you know, everybody thinks bar boxes are so easy. The problem is though, is if you get a little out of line, it can start affecting things drastically. Yeah, John, I also I also think that. The consequences of missing are so much worse right. than on a nine footer. At least yep. on a nine you can footer, get punished a lot more. you get punished. You pretty much, yeah, you know, you yeah. get punished. It's bad, you know. Especially with alternate breaks, you know, you can. Oh yeah. You mess up, you lose that game. Guy breaks, you lose another game. And... Okay, I'm going. I'm going uh, feature mode again. I'm going to go back to the the main table. Um, but I, I also wanted you guys to uh, be able to see that uh, Charlie Bryant, and I, I'm not, I don't know the, cause this guy's name that Charlie's playing on table two, uh, the black guy. Do you, do you know who he is? I've seen him. I don't know his name. I'll check the bracket right now, guys, since that's kind of my job. Oh, 
on s table three playing Alex Olinger, Sam Manoli. He's a good player. And uh, Wayne Munerlin. Hey, if Renee Benton is here and she's giving massages and you need one, you should get one. From Lawton, from Lawton, Oklahoma. He's Wayne Munnerlin. Oh, he's good. Munnerlin, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. Player. I don't he's know. A good player. I, I, I just, I mean, I've said this several, more than once. Uh, Wayne's like a, I think he's like a Fargo six seventy or six eighty. I think, I think. I've said this more than. Oops, sorry, that's not uh, where I'm trying to go. I've said this more than once already, uh, and that is that uh, Oklahoma has been showing uh, a lot of strength in this tournament. Oklahoma has a good talent pool, you know. I guess there's not a lot to do out there on the plains that play pool, rope cows and play pool. Yeah, just like <laughs> talk, like Chalk is free said in the chat room. If Mark Dimmick walks in the room, I'm going to put my shoe in my wallet. Or my wallet in my, <laughs> my wallet in my shoe. Mark is funny. He, uh, he said something to me the other day that was really, really cool, really profound. Somebody was complaining about getting second place in the tournament, and Mark says, I'll take second place in every tournament I play in. Tell me about it. <laughs> Since second place is getting your expenses paid, yeah, first place sure. is having d enough money for dinner afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mark was thinking if he could just get second in every tournament, it'd be he'd be making plenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is sad that these tournaments, you know, a lot of the tournaments don't really pay out as much as uh, as commensurate with the uh, well, Warren got a little roll there. Commensurate with the skill level that people bring to the table. Well, you know, it's like, it's like uh, the, the comparison's been made many times before. And look, Warren looks like he's about to. Uh, oh, hold on a second. The score is three to. Could you move should that be, pen? Should be three to one, I think. No, Ooh, three to oh, three. Wait a minute. Wow, look at that. It's three to three, about to be four to three. We've been sitting here gabbing, and we've missed like four games. <laughs> well, I did. You didn't. Uh, the comparison's been made often about pool, you know. Uh, like, how much would you pay to, to, to play nine rounds of golf or n nine holes of golf with Tiger Woods? Yeah. You know, compared to playing, uh, you know, three sets of one pocket with Efren Reyes or, uh, or uh, you know, a race to 20 against Warren Kiyomko or Ronnie Elcano or... You know that that is or one of the Darren good Appleton from the fan side of it. That's one of the good things about the sport is that we've got we've literally got easy access to, to all the pros. Um, most of them. we're lucky in that respect. Yeah, we're yeah. very lucky. I mean, it's not good for them. No. Um, Kelly Fisher kind of clued me into that. You know, a while back when I was working with Sterling, we used to do exhibitions, and, and I was responsible for managing them and setting them up and. And I wanted Kelly to be in the booth, you know, more often, of course, from the from the employer side of things, because mm -hmm. I want fans to be able to see her. And and she's like, she said, John, she said, I'm not being arrogant. She said, she said, but you have to understand that the more accessible I am, the less special it is to be around me. The less value, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it for a little while, and I, I agreed with her, and we set up, you know, um, exhibition times, and in between those times, you know, she just wasn't there. And it was more special. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. You know, I had to learn the hard way too. I learned that if you give stuff, if you give too much stuff away for free, no one finds the value in it. You know. Yeah, that is true. You know, they did a thing on that. There's a um, there's a book about that about um, the freemium economy, where you know a lot of a lot of the websites and things like that, they'll they'll lure you in with a like a, a free app, a free account or something, and then mm -hmm. you get a you get a certain level of of uh, service. Um, and so there's been lots of pricing experiments done, but they had one where they were giving away some kind of candy, like M and M's or something like that. And they found out that that if they give away the candy, if the, if the price of the candy is free, they ended up not getting rid of as much candy as when they charged a small fee mm, mm -hmm. you know, they charge if they put five cents on it they actually sold out of the candy crazy isn't it you know now I'm going to say they didn't do that experiment at a pool tournament because if they'd given away free candy here then one guy would have stuffed his pockets and they'd have been gone yeah. <laughs> pool players know the value of free
This is a live stream pool hall banger. So uh, Warren is, he's kind of poised to take a lead in this match. And it's been, uh, it's been an uphill battle for him this match. Joey's been playing well. It's like I said, they're, they're dialed in, you know. You're not seeing a lot of mistakes. Have you seen it? many? There's been Just some push-outs. I saw that one where Warren, and Warren uh, missed, missed that. the seven ball. Yeah. Or three ball. Yeah. Three ball. And, um... Yeah, I'd love to see. I don't know what the Fargo. Let's go, let's check their Fargos, should we? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna bet they're close. I think Joey's around a 7.30, 7.40. Warren's probably like a 7.60. Warren Kiamko is a 7.86. Okay, good. Uh, and the robustness is 55-35, so he's kind of had a lot of matches. Yeah. You know, Mark Dimmick is a, is a uh, 680. So, uh, Joey Gray, Oklahoma City, he's a robustness of 25-83. He's got 747, so Warren is the favorite mm -hmm. by a factor of 40 or something close to that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's a factor. There's a factor there, but it's not 40. <laughs> But interestingly enough, you know, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, and what's that based on? Nine footers, bar boxes, yeah, everything. It's based you know, on everything. Yeah, based on everything. Overall skill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what all comes into it. Mike Page, you know, made a big post about that, and mm. he explained that it's like football, right? So you can have a, you can have a couple running backs or, or whatever. You know, I don't know much about football. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You have two guys in, in the same position who have different stats, but they're relatively equal as players. Mm -hmm. Because one guy's better at running, the other guy's better at mm -hmm. catching or tackling or whatever it is that you know that they have to do, right? But the end result is is that they, they, they end up being relatively equal. Okay. Um, and so for pool, right, it's it's everything that, that whatever it is that gets you to a basically a, a win percentage um, against other people mm -hmm. that is stipulates big. what your percentage is yeah, or what your it. rating it's is. Everything that goes into making you that, that player mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is able to win mm -hmm. at whatever percentage you're able to win at, who cares how it got there? Well, let me just make a comparison. So if uh, I, I was to shoot 500 straight shots and you were to shoot 500 banks and they would all go in, we'd both be rated 1,000, mm -hmm. but that just means I'm good at straight shots and you're good at banks. That's right. So, you know, if right? we, there would be matches, for example, where, I, where there would be long straight in shots that determine the match and, and, and you would, miss you them would all. come out on top on, in that situation. And I would come out, yeah. And, and I would any bank, come out I would miss or, yeah. and you would make them all. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, if we played a lot of sets, yeah. We would probably come out relatively even because... So maybe, maybe, maybe we need a Fargo 2.0 in a few years, you know, that has a little bit more contrast, in-depth analysis of the... Uh, well, here's, here's the thing with that, right? So I wouldn't doubt that, that, that Mike Page and, and, uh, and I think Steve Ernst is doing it. I, I wouldn't doubt that they have that in mind because, you know... I don't know if they're keeping this data, but if they're not, they should be. They certainly have the information to know which tournament was a bar table tournament and which tournament was a, you know, and, and they could even go further if they wanted and know which table was played on Simonis and which table on Mercury and so on um, to, to take the data and, and parse it out even further. That was Joe's game, right? Yeah. Currently five four. To who? Do it, man. Um, to Warren. To Warren. Yep. I mean, they could literally, you know, say, "Well, okay, uh, you know, this guy plays. He's on Simonis only. 
on Simonis only, for example, he's uh, you know he's a he, he plays like a 700 speed. Exactly. You know, but on this other cloth, he plays like a you know 625. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Mike has said that that, uh, that that the calculations that go into Fargo are more robust than what is used for chess. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I found it. I did an experiment myself um, three weeks ago where I, I, I told people, I said, I'll play you whatever, whatever Fargo says we play to make it an even match. So it's a 50% chance that either of us, both of us have a 50% chance to win. Um, I'll play for $200 and I'll play races to 15. Okay. So there were times when I was giving up uh, um, nine games on 15 against people. And after two weeks, um, you were broke. <laughs> no, I broke. I broke even. Okay. I played. Uh, I, I won. I won uh, nine hundred and fifty dollars, and I lost nine hundred and fifty dollars. Interesting. And I played. Uh, I played approximately. I think I played eighteen sets. Look at that shit. I shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know we might have kids watching. So. Yeah. No. This is going to be a good little lesson. Is he going to hold it? He, it looks like he's going to spin hold it. Oh, he came out. Okay. Good shot. Wow. That was beautiful. That's a great lesson. Right he there. he dragged slip stroke that shot. For all of you people watching, that shot right there is worth the price of admission. Of admission. Times a hundred. If you had to pay a hundred dollars. Yeah. To watch this show. Yeah. Because that shot right there, what that's, he just shot. If true. you learn it, it will make you money. So please donate a hundred dollars to POV Pool today. <laughs> <laughs> How can they donate? Uh, you know. It's the first time somebody's asked. Uh, I haven't actually uh, posted the donate link, but, you know, every bit helps. And if you ever care to donate to POV Pool, uh, you can donate to us on PayPal. And uh, it's at uh, povpool.com slash donate. Thank you, John, for asking that. I tell you what I'll do, guys. For everybody who donates... Um, at least twenty dollars. Okay. In the next hour. This is a J. I, I feel a JBK special coming on right now. For everybody who donates at least twenty dollars, I will I will hold a raffle. I will pick somebody from that in the next hour, and that person will get three times what they donated as a gift certificate against JB cases. Are you hearing this, guys? Wow, um, this is big. 160 people in the in the watching now. It's not tax deductible. No, get out of here, pool hall. <laughs> if if you're a professional pool player, it's tax deductible, right? Because anything you buy you mean, toward you your mean pool you're game, not, you're not technically a nonprofit organization. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not making a profit, but I'm you, not a nonprofit either. I bet either. you fill out your taxes on this, and the IRS <laughs> offers you nonprofit status. <laughs> yeah, they've been calling and asking, like really, like almost like phone sales. <laughs> Do you want to go nonprofit? Because you know, really, you should. yeah. <laughs> so once again, if uh, if you donate twenty dollars or more to POV Pool, John Barton has offered three times that amount as a gift, gift voucher yeah. against credit. any a gift credit against any of his merchandise. John J B Case's merchandise. That's that's a beautiful thing. Thank you. I, I did not expect that. What time is it? That's it's a four, huge. It's four forty-four. So you guys got an hour to get your get your uh, entry in. And is it, they they just donate on PayPal, right? Yeah, they can donate on PayPal, uh, povpool.com slash okay. donate, or they can just go straight to povpool right, at gmail.com. Don't be nitty. I know everybody wants a case from JB. I know, I know people are saying. There's a few people. Who I wish I had the money to do it. You know what I mean? Those people are antisocial. Oh. And, and totally unexpected. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful. And by the way, I want you to know that uh, John Barton is also a uh, sponsor for the West Coast Swing events that are coming up in July. And, uh, and uh, you know, 
Let's these watch. are these are going to be huge events. Let's watch this. This is I think is he going between those balls? Oh wow, he got a window. That is... He mass aid. Oh no. He did not get shape. Now he's oh, but there's no jump cues too, by the way, in this. Oh, you that, know that? that is so horrible. You you like the jump cues, don't jump you? Cue. Of course I do, because jump cues are are a part of the game. They're they're a necessary part of the game. But the way I feel about it, honestly, is is that. Uh, it's um, it's part of the sport. It's been accepted worldwide, you know, and only in America are we just, you know, ass backwards on this subject. But anyway, you know, that'll that'll stir up another hornet's nest of debate. There's a good shot from Joey. It's about the best he could do right there. Got robbed, man. That was a good mass A. It was a good shot. Yeah, you, we didn't think you had a path through there. Yeah. Yeah, you got robbed. The speed could have brought you out a little bit more. It would have been great. So, uh, yeah, John's, we're here John's talking, talking to, to Joey. <laughs> so for those of you who were watching on stream on that one, uh, Joey had to mass a that ball just a little bit to get through that gap. Yeah. And uh, then he, he, he hit the one full, so that's what slowed it down. It didn't allow it to come out above the seven. Oh, and Warren just gets there. I think Joey can still catch a piece of this. I think actually the the reason for that rule is that it was a Junior Norris thing. Junior Junior wasn't a fan of jump cues. So what? <laughs> I'm just saying, the, you know. You know, it's still handicapping the players that are alive. Mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. He's massing that, that, again. He's massing again for the side pocket. What a shot. What a shot. That was something special right there. You notice how slow, nice and slow he massay that. <clears throat> yeah, because the slower you massay, the more massay you get out of it, and more curve. The hornet uh, the hornet nets. <laughs> lucky OKC. I leave them alone when the hornets are gonna sting other people. <laughs> I'm a guest on this stream right now. I'm not catching that. What? Uh... Oh, it's just controversial topics. Oh, okay. You know, I usually I usually don't shy away from them. Yeah. As you said, I'm president of the debate club. <laughs> Did you like that? Did you yeah, like? That's pretty good. <laughs> you still got the wrench though for a while. I'll, you know, I'll let you have that. <laughs> Actually, I'm 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 a uh, I'm pretty conservative with the ban hammer. I give people a lot of chances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Now, Joey, this, uh, this Joey. match is five five now. This hey. is a, this is nip and tuck, man. It's actually a six five right now to Joey. Warren's got Warren's ahead. Oh, OK. Somehow I keep missing every uh, other game. Did you I win, keep, Alex? I keep Alex. What was the score? The nine four. Alex uh, Olinger won his match nine four against uh, against uh, who was it? He played uh, John. Alex Olinger? I don't know who he played. Uh, let's see. Oh, that was uh, Wayne Muller Munnerlin. Oh, he played Wayne? He, okay. No, no, no. That, that's Charlie Bryant's match, but that's okay. who you were talking about earlier, Wayne Munner Munner Munnerlin. Yeah, Wayne's actually from uh, from Lawton. Um, or he's living in Lawton. He's, uh, Looks like Mark Chernin's still in his match, by the way. She's playing Chase Rudder. Mark's a player. You know, he told me stories about playing guys to standstill, you know, playing guys like Keith to, uh, <coughs> to standstill. Is Keith one of those guys where I can just say Keith and everybody knows who I'm talking about? I think so. I think so. As long as they're pool players. You know? Is he like Madonna? Yeah, he's like <laughs> the Madonna of pool. Like the Lady Gaga of pool. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, Madonna does a concert and she goes, anybody seen Molly? Keith does a tournament and he goes, anybody seen the money? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. But it's like, uh, you know, Geraldine tells me all the time, she's like, you may be famous in a pool hall, but you're, no you're nothing in a Starbucks. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, this is a good little shot right here. You see how he's measuring it up off that rail? Because you want to be careful here not to, not to scratch. So you gotta, you gotta make sure you get the right angle to come up past the side pocket. This is a real easy one Two to rails. either hit the eight. Three, a third rail maybe. Well, see. You know, it, here's see, the third see rail. What, see what happens here? He, he, he ended up having to go to that ball to and be bump. on the safe side. Because if he had played the angle to come in sharp, he could either come in and bump the eight, or he could scratch. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. those are two bad outcomes. Mm -hmm. It could be bad. He'll be out here. He should be. And that'll tie it up at six, right? Joe's, uh, Joey's pumped up. Uh, you can see the kind of, you know, nostrils flaring a little bit there. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but <laughs> you can definitely see it when Joey gets in good punch. And when yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Right now he's flowing pretty good. He is. Uh, he's playing a lot better today than he did in the ring game two days ago. So, you know, Joey's a marathoner too. He runs a lot and he, uh, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. stays really fit. All right, so six, six. we have ourselves a nip and tuck most of the way so far. And once again, if you guys are just joining us, this is Daniel Bush. I am live from Wichita Falls, Texas for the Junior Norris Memorial event. Lucky OKC. Lucky OKC, send me your email address. Lucky OKC, who are you? Yeah, send me your email address. Uh, povpool at gmail.com. I can't see your picture on there, Lucky. Who are you? Is that Matthew? It's probably Matthew. Is it Matthew? See how, how cool is Matthew, right? He's, he's actually shouldering Go all the to channel. come here. Yep. Is that Matthew? Is it? Yeah. Matthew did 20 bucks? Yeah. So that means he gets 60 bucks off of the... <laughs> if he's the only one that donates, he'll get it. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, w w when would this be valid until... Because we, we've got to make sure nobody... <laughs> it's... Oh, it'll, it'll never go away. If they, if they Once I give it to them, I'll just put it on their account and it'll just be there forever. No, no, no. I'm saying... Oh, for an like, hour. I don't so... want anybody... Okay, for an yeah, hour. So they start at 444. So at 544 is when we'll cut it off. 544, okay. And that's uh, Central Time. Thanks a lot. Yeah, like... What? We figured it <laughs> Thank out. Thank you. <laughs> we already told... Uh... All right, so it's 6-6. Six, six. So Matthew elected to come down here and do this all by himself, you know, and, and, and shoulder the cost and, and get uh, really you know, the profit from it. Um, and uh, because I had, you know, as, as I told you before, I couldn't I couldn't really make the time to come down. So we're only here for today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You couldn't possibly do all of this all in one day. Right. You know, you know and, uh, you know, I tell you what, working with him has been really great. Um, he he really is one of those people that's, that's got a really fine heart, you know. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And he does things like that all the time. You know? So uh, good on you, Matthew. Uh, how many years has he been with you? So it'd be three years. Uh, this um, it was three years May. So yeah. that's good. He's he seems like a great guy. I mean, uh, I've been talking to him and. Uh, he seems very laid back and gave me a tip on the food. He's told me where to get the good brisket for seven bucks, you know. <laughs> Semi says, uh, Semi says, uh, don't you guys think they should make pool more difficult? Uh, um, I think know, pool, pool is difficult. Well, 
pool pool runs the gamut from uh, from relatively easy to pretty damn difficult. But at the highest levels, if you want to play at the highest levels, it's difficult on every table. Yeah. You know, I mean, another way to look at it is if you think if you think that it's easier on bar tables, well, great, it's easier for everybody, which means. There's a lot more people who can win, which means you really have to bring it to rise to the top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, a, I agree with you. There's a reason why all these top bar, all these bar table tournaments like this, the top players, the people who are recognized as top players on any table, still end up at the top. You know, and then there'll be a sprinkling of, of amateurs. There'll be a sprinkling of, of amateurs that you haven't heard of, or you know, that are regional, good regional players that 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 finish high but most of the time these tournaments are won and the top spots are held by the pros that are well recognized for their skill at least that's how i see it i mean maybe the data could prove me wrong on that but there's always something that can prove you wrong on something else you know so i like your opinion though <laughs> we ought to start doing it like the news have you ever noticed on the news they, they say things like uh like uh the uh, crime has risen 50% since 1982. Oh, and then I yeah, always wonder, statistics. I said, well, what happened if you, what would happen if you like got it from 1983? Mm -hmm. You guys see that shot right there that Joey just did? He sliced the ball in, great speed, come down to miss the nine. Um, yeah, that's an up and down shot like that. And a lot of miss people, the three too. A lot of people, a lot of people miss that shot because mm -hmm. they can't hold, they, they don't have the discipline to know that they can cut it and make it go straight up and down the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they start to kind of throw it a little bit. Now Joey got a little out of line here. You know, he's uh, he can probably swing it around pretty easily here, but he he would have liked to have been a little bit more um, to the left on the shot. I'm making a list for you there. Oh, I thought it was a list of topics to stay away from. From now on, whenever I commentate on your stream, I got to like sign off on this list of things I won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Mendenhall, we want to thank you for your donation to POV Pool. And uh, we will be sending you, an, wow. or John Barton and JB Cases will be sending you an email for that gift voucher. And uh, we thank JB uh, Cases remember, once remember, again. Remember, we're going we're gonna to pick a person out of this. It's a raffle sort of deal, right? Where we're going to pick a winner and then that person will get three times I see. Okay, that makes sense. Three times okay. the money. Now, you guys get that? You'll be eligible for a drawing. But here, for everybody else, just because it wasn't probably wasn't perfectly clear, one person will get three times their, their voucher. Everybody else who donates will get a voucher exactly equal to what they donate. Oh, really? How about that? Really? Okay. Cool? So if you... Yes. Okay, so if you do not win... The drawing. If you don't win the three, you'll times, still you'll receive still... the one time. Right. But what I need everybody to do who's listening, please, please go on my website real quick and and create an account for yourself, so it'll be easier for me to give you your credit. Then do I you hear that, guys? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna make that a requirement because I don't want to have to do all that work of okay. looking you up. That's JB Cases. Uh, www.jbcases.com. Register with John Barton Cases at jbcases.com, send us a donation, and uh, that donation will be instantly turned around uh, and possibly eligible for three times the amount of that donation as a gift voucher towards your next uh, case. I noticed also you did a laptop case. Are you doing other cases and other designs for things? Yeah, yeah, we've done... Seven to... Joey has pulled ahead. It is seven to six. Thank you. We want to say a little loudly that Joey Gray came with it that last rack. Joey Gray did come with it that rack. Joey Gray doesn't care. He's he's, a, he's, he's, in he's yeah. He's not looking. He's not trying to talk to us. I think we need to go get you some plexiglass. <laughs> <laughs> I bought some plexiglass, but I didn't bring it for this event. <laughs> So Warren's a little funny right here. See, because he's below the side pocket. So this is this one's a little funny because uh, to get shape back on the three here. 
it's hard to wedge. tell where the three is. If he can pull it back past the side pocket, he's good to go right here. I wanted to actually, uh, Joey's been on my stream already like three times in the past couple days, maybe four. Oh, look what he did here. Look at this. So I wanted, to, I wanted to give a shout out to Joey's sponsor, Michael Durbin Custom Cues. What a great guy Mike Durbin is. You know, he, uh, for someone who doesn't make that many cues, mm. every cue he makes is, is gorgeous and a great player for one thing, but for another thing, he really sponsors a lot. You know, and uh, it's a real good guy for pool. <coughs> oh, that was beautiful. Look at this. I hope he's not jacked right. up over the six. Ooh. He's, he kind of made it tough for himself after he got shape on the uh, on the two there. So now he's kind of fighting uphill. But he's not. He's not jacked up though. So he's, uh, he's okay there. He's elevated though. Yeah. He's yeah. elevated. Oh, there you go. Well, you called it. This is going to, if Joey wins this, it puts him on the hill. No, this is not easy either, right here. You know, this is kind of, Joey's right next to the rail, and he's got that little tricky eight there. I and mean, you got to make sure you either get past the eight or clear it. I'm not sure what he sees here. Let's see. I think he's just going to go in and out. Yeah, and he'll oh, stun okay, up, stun up. Yeah. He'll end up back cutting the six, you, yeah, probably. He'll just hit unless, this like a stop shot. Yeah, yeah. Unless he might come out all the way and come across near the nine ball and just have a straight shot. Because I he does it, have. I think it's what he's, he's just going to hit this like a like almost like a stop shot with just a touch of draw. He might even make the nine here. Whoop. No. Yeah, straight shot. Straight shot. That was, a, that was a bad little sequence for Warren. Uh. This is quite a match. Quite a match. Warren Kiamko earns himself the hot seat in the eight ball. He's struggling in the nine ball right now against Joey Gray. How was it? He left himself tough over that ball, too, you know. You know, it's only fair that the, the, uh, the Oklahoma guys come down to Texas and take some money home since the Texas guys come and take our money all the time. Okay. That's, that's good <laughs> justification. That's a good rationalization. Let's take a quick look at the other tables here. I'm sorry, guys, but I can't uh, give you any score updates because I'm not... I'm not counting that's charlie hill billy bryant shooting a nine ball right there uh alex olinger beat uh, sam manoli nine games to four and i don't know what the outcome of that mark chernin match was did you happen to see uh who looked sadder i didn't, at the end of I didn't even notice <laughs> uh, you ever do that you just try to guess who uh, who lost by the expression the one that's putting their cue away the one that's talking and shrugging if you ever watch me play you'll know It'll be real clear. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I actually haven't seen you in much uh, in much action. Um, I did watch your Justin March match. Uh, uh, you know, a, a couple of hours of it, and then you were you were battling a lot with uh, Lou Costello. Was Lou it? Lou Figueroa. Lou Figueroa. Yeah. That is this? A, am I bringing up a sore? It's is a it, painful I, thing. No, it's okay. I don't know the whole backstory, so I don't. We if don't I'm have, bringing up anything, we don't, we don't have time to get into okay, it. Okay. Okay. Good. We're, let's we're, let's just say that uh, it's probably not a good idea to make internet mat grudge matches uh, where one has a lot of ego and emotion wrapped up into it. Okay. <laughs> and we're watching a great match between Warren and Joey now, so this is all Joey oh, needs. Yeah, this is a, He's got a nice little. Wow. What? How in the world did you possibly come through all that like that? Why that hard, though? That was a very hard... He hit that very hard. Well, he had to get the spin to catch and everything. I, I don't know, actually. That that hard, that hit that he hit that the speed that it could have hit an eighth rail. I'll be I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you on that shot. I don't. 
if he had enough room to make the three, I honestly believe that he played the wrong way to get there. I wouldn't have gone three rails around that way now, you know. Ray Hansen told me don't don't uh, I probably shouldn't mention him on your stream, but he told me once he That's said, fine. Don't, don't criticize uh don't criticize the good player. But I think even the good players once in a while they can pick the wrong path. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, once and in a while. Obviously, but... obviously, Joey felt like that's the way he wanted to go, and, and maybe he didn't intend to hit it that hard. Um, but I think I would have tried to come straight across the table and back out to control the speed. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know that that shot was definitely seven or eight rail speed right there. Yeah, absolutely. It was crazy. The ball went crazy. You know, once in a while, though, it's like this, right? You think that you're going to hit it at a different Certain speed, speed and yeah. you twitch yeah yeah you know like your muscle just just you have no that's just you and me we're old you that's know? just <laughs> no i saw i saw um remember joey's young he's fit <laughs> the, the muscle memory you're talking about oh, right yeah speaking of memory man my memory's going it's a rogue jimmy wedge jimmy oh, wedge jimmy wedge yeah the... from canada no no he's from minnesota or Mis yeah i think yeah minnesota Anyway, um, so back in the 90s, he was playing Efren Reyes for the uh, eight ball, back, what, what, what was then back then billed as the eight ball world championships. And um, this was on ESPN, and, and uh, he's, he's got to draw his ball like a foot to get shape on the eight. Okay. Right? And he hits it, and he draws it straight over into the side mm, and mm. hands Efren the win. I saw this happen uh, uh, this morning with... Uh Roger Sen. He was playing Warren. Warren beat him 9-0, unfortunately. But he had two games to win. But he, he, he drew an eight ball to get shape on the nine, but went all the way back to the pocket and scratched. Totally overdrew the shot. I so. think Brendan I think Brendan probably called it, you know, he was uh, thought he was gonna get more of the ball. And uh Way over cheated the pocket. That may be true because it went so fast. I didn't. I didn't really see it. That's a good point, Brendan. All right, maybe we're just overthinking it. Yeah, but even so, I don't think. I don't think going three rails was the shot. Yeah. So um, seven eight Joey on the hill. So Warren with a good break. Uh, I think the one passes the five to the corner pocket. So. Yeah, this one. This one looks like a, looks, looks like, like a pretty Cosmo. much a roadmap on here. Yeah, Cosmo. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know what that means. Mm. Cosmo. How do you know what it means? Because you can't be old enough to, to have ever really seen Tom Cosmo in action. I know it as a Cosmo uh, from word of mouth in the last ten years, but I didn't know the backstory behind Tom Cosmo. So maybe one day you can okay, share so, it with me. So you know what? You know that an easy out. It's called the Cosmo, mm -hmm. but you don't know the backstory. No, no. Okay. All right. Before, so before I get into it, um, anybody in chat want to jump in and tell it? There you go. Because I know the story, but I'll give someone else a chance. It's good shape on the six. Yeah. Well. He'll probably come for the. He might. Right, we can't tell. He might cinch this, but if he doesn't cinch it, he'll play short side of the eight. Yeah, probably. No, he's coming back and across. See, he plays. I like how he hits that. He ball. just plays better yeah. than me. Yeah. <laughs> Is he one of those guys that, that uh, even even when we're in the chair, he still plays better? Yeah. <laughs> Last night out with uh, with Joe uh, Joe Busca. I was playing uh, spectator pool with him. Did you hear that? We were doing like guessing the key ball right after the break, and <laughs> that's a good way. That's a good way to learn, actually. I ask. Um, so I'll tell. I'll tell the Tom Cosmo story real quick, so we don't lose track of that. It's uh, eight eight. So we're on the hill. It's hill hill. So we're quick, on the hill. Real quick while they're racking. Tom Cosmo was a uh, was a trick shot artist, and he would always start his show by doing, uh, setting up a, putting a layout all, out on the table and he mm -hmm. would shoot, he would shoot uh, eight, eight spot shot or eight shots that were stop shots. And the very last shot would stop on a dime. Okay. And so the players started calling any easy out. They swear it was basically all stop shots. They, they, they called it Cosmo. That's okay. Where it comes from. That's awesome. Eight stop shots and stop on a dime. Yeah. 
basically he would just throw out a layout and then you know yeah. so it would be stop 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 and then he'd have a dime sitting there on the table and his name just happened to be Cosmo well his name was Tom Cosmo Tom Cosmo yeah and so the players because that was how he opened his routine mm -hmm. they came to start calling any easy out they just started calling it a Cosmo oh, no. wow that was pretty God does he have a shot if I don't know, but here, I, I do know he's been massaying very well today. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to have to do it on at eight eight. I think he's got. I think he's got this. Hold on, let's see. I got a slight angle on this table. Let's see if we can see it from here. I think he's got this shot. He just doesn't want to end up too straight on the four on the three. If he ends up very straight on the three. There we go. He's got angle. He's got angle. You know, even this shot here is still a little tricky. You know, but uh, for you and what, me, I think. Let's see what he likes to do. I think I think it's a little bit of a little. Yeah, it's it's a lot stun, less tricky. A little inside <laughs> stun, just a little inside stun flicks. Yeah, just like that. that yeah. Who's Charlie's opponent? We'll look at it in a minute, but uh, it looks like uh, Munnerlin. Oh, that's Wayne Munnerlin. Oh, okay. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. Yes, Wayne Munnerlin from uh, Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, this is going to be over, guys. It's going to be Joey Gray. Warren Kiamko is going to have his work cut out for him. Pretty awesome though. This is race to nine on both sides. Good nice enjoy. match. Very Appreciate good match, enjoy. guys. Joey Gray defeats Warren Kiamko nine games to eight. What a match. It was nip and tuck all the way. And uh, we've also got Charlie Bryant playing Sam Munnerlin on the other table. So what we'll do is we'll toggle over. You can watch that See, match. Warren practicing the shot that he missed. This was kind of the key, the key point in the, in the match here. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Remember where he, where he was where he elevated over the but seven. I think he had to be elevated here because he he, he actually wasn't over the ball. Remember? No, now he hits it short. Remember when 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 we, when we looked at it, mm -hmm. we thought he might be jacked up, and mm -hmm. he got on the ball, but he, he had a full ball without having to be jacked up. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Warren's no stranger to the one lost side. He'll he'll. Uh, He'll do what he's got to do to, uh, you know, at least get into the top eight bracket. And uh, we're going to play out to the, did you know the format of this event? We're playing out all of the events three days in a row. We're playing to the final four of every event. And then on Sunday, it'll be a full day of finals. That is actually really good. I think I like that's that. pretty cool. Yeah, so like this Sunday is a full day of finals. I really get disappointed in tournaments that, you know, they get down to the finals and everybody's gone. There's no spectators and, you know, it just it's kind of anticlimactic for uh, for the players, I think. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I've even seen tournaments where they're uh, they're taking out tables while the players are playing the finals with forklifts and everything. I'm like, man, that's you know, <laughs> completely disrespectful. Well, they're trying to get out of there, so they don't have to pay more the, rent. I know the logistics <laughs> of it, you know, but I just... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, actually, I'm going to get up. I'm going to try to get the score of this match. Are you okay to sit here? Do you, you want to yeah, take a break? I'll sit here and talk. You know. We have until 544, remember? That's right. That's a half an hour. I need to go check on my daughter. Uh, Why don't you go do that, too? You know, uh, I, I'm okay with whatever you got to do. You're not, you're not confined to these quarters. I'm going to check the score, though. You want another drink?